Hello and welcome to the webinar Simulink for new users. My name is Priyanka. I'm the product marketing manager for Simulink. And hi, uh, I'm Michael, uh, senior product marketing manager also for Simulink. And today we are going to talk about how you can get started with Simulink. Uh, we'll use these four blocks here, modeling, simulation, essentially three blocks, and collaboration. And we will show you how to use some of the features, get started with Simulink, get running with uh, building models. Right. So I think we want to present this in terms of, you know, how would you use Simulink? Uh, typically, you would start building out a model, uh, designing a system, and then simulating the model to make sure that that system is behaving the way yep. uh, you expect it to behave. Um, and then once you are uh, happy with the results and you want to share uh, your model with others, uh, either in your team or uh, cross organization, um, what's the best way to do that? So we're kind of going to go over all those different things. Yeah. So without further uh, delay, we can get started with, uh, you know, the showing you how you can do these things within MATLAB. So yeah. let me bring up MATLAB here. And uh, anyone who's used MATLAB, uh, this is the this is how the interface would look like. We mm -hmm. have this command window where you can start typing commands. Yeah. And to get started with Simulink, first I'll start typing Simulink here. And if I hit Enter, it opens up a Simulink start page. Now let's maximize it. What we have here are a few templates that, you, that allow new users to get started with. For example, we have a digital filter or feedback controller with some of the blocks already existing, so you don't have to open a blank Simulink model. Right, and if you have uh, other products besides Simulink, as you scroll down, there's different uh, starting point templates uh, for the other products as well. But I think for our um, presentation today, we're just going to start with the uh, blank model, right? Yeah, just to show how easy it is to set up a model, I would like to start with a blank model. And this is how a blank simulating canvas would look like. Mm -hmm. um, as a first a step, um, I would just want to save my model. Um, so I'll just call it my model and save it in the same current directory as I'm working. Sounds good. So, so we have a blank model, uh, and we need to um, you know, put some blocks inside of here. Uh, right. And so the best way to do that, probably the library browser, right? Yes. So Simulink is a block diagram environment. You, all you want to do is to bring some blocks, and the blocks can be accessed from the Simulink library browser. I just clicked the library browser from the menu here, mm -hmm. and that brings up this library browser which has uh, not only Simulink, but all other products and several blocks that you can simply uh, drag and drop. So right. you don't have to build some of these blocks on your own, but you can use some of the pre-existing blocks. So what type of model do you think we should build this as a starting point sample model? Yeah, so for the first example, uh, let's build a very simple model which takes in a sine wave input, amplifies it by a factor, and um, you know, the way to just work with signals. Okay. So for that, I'll use the sources library, which has um, different blocks that act as a signal source. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, uh, you can have a constant value as a signal source. But you're or you looking for a sine wave. Sine wave. Yeah. yeah, so I'll just bring in the sine wave block. I'll just drag it and drop it, and that will bring a block into my model. Okay. And when I did that, it gave me an option of uh, what my amplitude uh, should be for the sim sine wave. I can simply ignore it and go with the default value, which is one, or I can give another value here. Uh, now let's bring uh, other blocks that allow amplification of this wave. Uh, one of the nice ways you can bring in blocks uh, is through a quick insert, where you can just click on the canvas for one, uh, one time it will bring up a search uh, magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. And you can start typing the names of the blocks if you already know what to use. OK, so, so you know, let's say we want to add a gain block right. uh, into the model. Usually, uh, we know that gain is what is used to you know, multiply a particular value by a factor. So I'll, I'll type that in. And that showed me all the search results from various different libraries that are available. Again, just looking and mapping back to the library browser. Right. So it tells you everything with the word gain, every block that has the word gain in it, 
And to know which one to choose, you can see underneath each name tells you the name of the product where that uh, block exists, and then the sublibrary. Yep. Um, you know, so I'll just product. use the math operations library yep. and bring that gain block in. Um, say you want to multiply it by a factor of three. Mm -hmm. I can just enter three here, similar to what you did for the sine wave. But if you uh, missed that or just went for the default value, you can always double click and uh, change the value here. Uh, as you go through your modeling uh, exercise, you might want to try several values as it works for you, right. so you can do that. So that little prompt that shows up, that's really just a convenience. Um, yes. So you don't, you don't have to open up this dialog box yeah. if you don't want to. Yeah, when you, when you quickly want to build something, you can use the convenience mechanism that comes in with the quick insert, but otherwise you can just uh, use the block dialogs. Okay. So, uh, and then once you have a couple blocks here, uh, connecting these two is very simple. Drag a signal and uh, join it to the next block next to it. Sounds good. And now that we have an input and we have amplified it by a value, we, we want to visualize it. Theoretically, we know that it mu should multiply that signal by three. Yep. So for visualizing, we'll I'll do bring it in a scope. A, yeah. Scope is the most popular way in which you can visualize signals within simulating. So I just searched for it. It's in Sync's library, and I'm adding it back to the model. Now, I'll add two ports for this because I want to visualize the um, output signal, which is this. And do you see this nice um, guide that lets you connect these signals whenever? Yeah, anytime you align two blocks, yeah. you're going to get um, basically an alignment um, indicator yep. to, uh, to help you create a nice clean looking diagram yeah. and the good thing is you don't didn't I didn't have to drag the signal it just clicking it would connect it yeah. connect the block now to connect this block I just simply drag that signal and add it to the scope block now that time did you didn't do a your basic left click drag you did a right click drag for yes that, right? if I did a left click that would just move the signal around mm -hmm. but if I do a right click that would branch out the signal and once you have a branch, you can simply um, you know, drag it with the left click. Okay. So I'll just select the branch and delete it for now. Sounds good. And then I can use uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts like spacebar to fit the whole model to view or use zoom and pan uh, using the mouse wheel. That's nice. That yeah. uh, you know, allows you to look at your model. Yeah, we want right. to maximize our space, right? Right. So we're so, ready to simulate, right? Yeah. I'll close up the library browser open up our scope block so we can see our simulation results and simply run the simulation. All right. Once I run it, you see the uh, input, which is a sine wave with amplitude of 2. It's my, uh, amplified by a factor of 3. You see the output here. All right. That, that's good. So you run the simulation uh, just to make sure that everything is behaving the way we expect it to behave. Right. It is, so we're pretty happy. So yeah. th this is a pretty common workflow, right? You, yes. You, you build up your model. Um, you know, anytime you're making changes, you want to press play as, as often as possible mm -hmm. um, so that it basically keeps you honest. Um, right. You know, and you're always verifying to make sure that what right. you're building can be simulated. Yes, and that's kind of the power of simulating. Uh, to be honest, if I just went here and changed the value, Mm -hmm. Simply press the play button and quickly visualize it in the score block. So that's that's what you would want to do with simulating. Okay.